Well, now we're going to have a talk for the diggers group, and then after that we'll have some notices. Well, good morning, diggers. I hope you're well and that you've had a really good week. I hope you're not too chilly. I guess by the time you're watching this, you've already had your diggers Zoom. I hope you've had a great time, and I'm sure you have. I hope you've learned lots of new things and been able to do some great things too. The Bible story that you looked at this morning is from Luke chapter 7. And it's a story about a meal that Jesus had, but it's a story about two very, very different people, isn't it? Do you remember, the first one was a man called Simon. Simon was a Pharisee, and he was probably a very proud man who thought he was a really good guy, a good man that God would be pleased with. Let's put him up. But the other person in the story was a woman who just turned up. She wasn't invited. She just came to see Jesus. And you know, Simon actually wasn't very pleased about that, was he? He seemed to be quite cross that she had come to see Jesus, that she gate crashed on the meal, that she just kind of barged her way in and come and see Jesus. But the other reason he wasn't pleased is because he knew what kind of woman she was. He knew that she had led a pretty bad life. That actually, if you were to look at a picture of her life like this one, that there would be lots and lots of bad things in it. Bad things that she had done and said and thought. Probably a number of bad things that she was very, very ashamed of. But the great thing is that she had discovered that God loves everyone and that in Jesus she could have all the bad things in her life forgiven and cleaned away and come to have Jesus as her friend. And because of that, she came to see Jesus now. You know, Simon probably thought his life was pretty good, that it didn't have many bad things in it at all. Okay, perhaps a few pinpricks, a few little things, but he thought he was good. And I guess he was quite proud of himself, really. But as we saw last week, what the Bible shows us is that every one of us has done wrong things. Every one of us needs to be forgiven by God. Every one of us needs Jesus. And that's what Simon needed to discover too. The great thing is that this woman had discovered it. And Jesus said, although she'd done all the wrong things that she'd done, all those wrong things were now forgiven because she'd put her faith and trust in Jesus. And the great news is that God loves each one of us and that anyone, no matter what kind of life we've led, no matter how many bad things we've done, anyone can come to Jesus and have all those wrong things forgiven so that they can be friends with God forever. You know, that was what the woman discovered. It was something that Simon needed to discover, and it's something we all need to discover, and I hope that we will. Well, great to see you this week, and I uh, hope you have a really good week ahead, and we'll see you again soon. Bye for now. Let me share with you a few notices for the week. Uh, firstly, to say that after our morning service this morning, uh, between 12.30 and 1 p.m., we'll be holding a Zoom coffee catch-up, which gives us uh, a chance to talk together, uh, to see how we're doing, uh, and to get to know each other a little better as well. Those are great times, so if you're able to join us, let me encourage you uh, to do so. We'd love to see you uh, then. Uh, and then on Tuesday and Wednesday evenings at 7.30 p.m., we have our Digging Deeper groups where we have an opportunity to meet up, uh, to look at the passage in the Bible that we're studying today uh, in a bit more depth, uh, to pray together uh, and enjoy each other's company. Uh, and also on Tuesday morning, we have our Digging Deeper group for women. Uh, that starts at 9.30 a.m. And if you're not part of uh, any of those Digging Deeper groups, but you'd like to be, then do please get in contact uh, with us and we'll be very happy 
uh, to include you in those. And then next Sunday we meet again like this, so do uh, join us once more for virtual church at the uh, normal time. And by the time that we broadcast this, children's resources and resources for the JCB group would be available to accompany our service uh, this morning. Uh, again, if you're not on the circulation list for any of those resources, then do please let us know and we'll be very happy to include you in the future. Well, let's come now to prayer and uh, let's bring our prayers to our great God. Let's pray. Our great Father, with the milestone of 100,000 COVID deaths this week, it's been a very sobering time across our nation. It's been a week where we've been confronted by the loss that has been experienced by so many in our country. And we want to pray for every family who has lost loved ones over the last 10 months of this crisis. Father, we pray that they may know your comfort in the pain of grief, and that they may know your help in their heartache and that in time they may know a measure of inner healing as they mourn but most of all father we pray that they will come to know you that they may come to know the wholeness peace and security of a real relationship with you a relationship that each one of us can discover through the lord jesus christ and we do pray that many in our nation will make that discovery that in all the emotion and emotional turmoil of this crisis that people across our community and our nation and our world will be drawn back to you that the God they may have turned their back on in the past will be the God who they turn to in their need now our great father we also want to pray for families today as their lives have again been impacted by the delay in the return to school we do pray that you'll give parents great help and patience and endurance as they juggle so many responsibilities at this difficult period and they have to not only care and entertain their children but also uh, to educate them lord we pray that you'll surround these families with your love and as a church we want to want to pray especially for all the young people uh, in our diggers jcb junction and j2o uh, groups we recognize that this is such a hard time for them and we pray that you'll help them and guard their physical and their mental health. Our Lord, we look back with thankfulness for another week where you have helped us and where you have provided for our needs. And as we reflect on your goodness to us, we want to remember and pray for our brothers and sisters across the world, particularly those who suffer for their faith in circumstances which are unimaginable for us. Father, today we want to pray that you would strengthen and that you would encourage them as they live for you, as each day they take up their cross and continue to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Please, Father, would you demonstrate your faithfulness to them. We ask that you would provide for their physical needs and their emotional comfort. We ask that you would protect them and that you'd bring them relief from persecution. We ask that you'd give them wisdom as they seek to live uh, faithfully for you in these hostile and difficult circumstances lord but father we also want to pray that you would really bless their witness for you we recognize that the persecution of christian faith doesn't extinguish it but that instead it leads to the good news of the lord jesus christ spreading in its transforming power and so father we ask that you would really use and bless their faith and the stand that they take to point others to the gospel to the good news of the lord jesus christ and that through them there will be many others who see the difference that you have made to their lives and who would come to discover that transforming power in their own lives father too we want to pray and remember the work of open doors we thank you so much for their focus and for their commitment to persecuted Christians all over the world and for the different ways in which they channel their support for the ways in which they distribute Bibles and make your word available to those who may otherwise struggle to receive it in their own language also for the way they support Christians in very practical ways providing money and other resources to those uh, who are serving you in these different and dangerous situations and we pray that as they serve as channels 
for the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, that many would benefit, and most importantly, many would come to know the Lord Jesus Christ for themselves as the ripples of the gospel move outwards in those communities. And Heavenly Father, we want to pray for ourselves now as we come to look into your word. Would you please uh, give us that ability to focus on what you have to say to us this morning? Would you turn our hearts towards you? And would you make us people who are ready and willing to receive the challenge and encouragement of your word as we hear it now? And we pray that we would do that for your glory and for the strengthening of our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, in a moment, we're going to be looking at the next part of Philippians chapter 2 as we continue our series, Joyful Citizens of a Heavenly Kingdom. But before we do that, let's sing again. We're going to sing a great hymn, Yet Not I, But Christ in Me. It's a great song of faith, of trust and commitment to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, but one that recognises that we can only do so by depending on on God's power at work within us. A part of it says, with every breath I long to follow Jesus, for he has said that he will bring me home, and day by day I know that he will renew me until I stand with joy before the throne. Well, let's make that our prayer as we sing this song, and let's also pray that we keep it in our minds as we come to hear what God has to say to us this morning through his word. Uh, do sing it at home, uh, join in, and then Sam, one of the members uh, of our church here, will be reading the part of the Bible that Peter is going to be opening up for us today. Let's sing together. <laughs> 